Much better. Hello, welcome back to the podcast where my bots haven't dropped yet. The most, the number one rated, most boring podcast on YouTube. Number one rated, most boring. Number one. Number one. And how does that pertain to your balls not dropping? I don't know, but we're number one. Okay. And that's marketing material. Okay, we are number that's, one. That's most what happens boring. when you when you leave a bad comment. I'm going to spin it positively because I work in marketing, so fuck you. <laughs> Are you allowed to say fuck you in the first 15 seconds? Well, it won't be in the first 15 seconds because I'm going to grab a clip from later on the show that I'll bring it in. Yeah. Ah, yeah. smart. Yeah. So Big smart. Brain. Big brain. Big brain, small balls. They are actually really small. That's what she said. That is what she said. That's what she said. They're perfectly proportioned. Symmetrical. Mm. No lumps. That is very important that there are no yeah. lumps. I just would appreciate a bigger package. Oh. Oh, well. Oh. Too late. You're already married to me. Unfortunately. Sucks for you. Sucks for me. Sucks for you to suck. Actually, I appreciate <laughs> that it's not overwhelmingly large to be able to suck it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's what she says. That is what she says. Come on, drink your drink so I can make you do I... a spit take. Come on, <laughs> fucking this up. <laughs> this episode is fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. Yeah. Um, got a Facebook friend, longtime Facebook friend from. Drinker Bros, if anybody's been in their group, I don't even know if they still exist anymore. I know they do, but I don't know if they're actually, like, how the group is doing. Nobody ever talks about it anymore. Yes, I'm on your lip. Your upper lip. Okay. okay. Fix that problem. Thank you. Yeah. It wasn't calm, right? Okay. Just had to make sure. This episode is dedicated to our friend Lori. She's getting ready to start chemo and just messaged me and said, hey, I want to support the channel. I'm going to listen through while I'm going through chemo. So here we are. I don't actually know what episode number this is going to be anymore. Might be 15. Maybe. 15 or 16, something along those lines. Saw your message. Didn't respond because that's totally me. You didn't so, even respond? I mean, I, I gave a heart reaction. That is the bare fucking minimum. Okay. Andrew. Okay. I am disappointed. Okay. Hey, I'm going to support y'all and listen to the podcast, but I'm waiting to start chemo. And my plan is to listen while I'm getting my infusions. Congratulations on your success. We're dedicating and oop, dedication, dedicating an entire episode. And while he's typing to that, and two of my cancer. aunts in Denmark also were just diagnosed and are going to be undergoing chemo as well. So. Although they don't know anything about this podcast. Filming right now. Fuck cancer. Yep, filming right now. Not telling you what episode it is. Because I we wasn't don't gonna, know. I wasn't going to tell you because I don't know either. But I wasn't going to. That was the, that was the other reason why I didn't respond because I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to get her hopes too high because I, I didn't want to say we were going to do this and then something come up and it'd be a sensitive topic. You didn't want to get her hopes up? No, I didn't want it to be a sensitive topic. Like I didn't want. Because I hadn't even talked to you about it yet. When I saw the message, you know how frequently I check anything. I I don't have notifications on my phone, especially push notifications with Charles. who used to track you. This is going to be facts with Andrew technology. Okay. And I'll just sit off to the side and drink my drink. Everything is being sold. Everything is being tracked. Everything you do online is traceable. You're not getting away with anything. You're the small fry right now, which is why you think you're getting away with it. We're talking about crime and cheating and everything else dumb that you might do in your messages because you think that they're private. Just because your friends can't see them or your wife or husband can't see them, everybody else sees Ooh, them. Ooh, what are you hiding from me? No, no, I'm saying that, like, you can't from your phone and your profile see my messages, but that doesn't make them encrypted. If you were to go and pay a private investigator, they could probably get every message I've ever sent. Or if you just unlocked my phone. And the if, thoughts that are spinning in my head And right if you now. delete stuff. But I del actually don't want to see. Deleting, deleting things doesn't delete anything. It deletes it from your phone. That's it. 
you're not deleting anything. It's already stored somewhere. It's already been logged somewhere else. It's already been sent somewhere else. Nothing you do on any device that you own is truly secure. With that being said, back to fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. Um, if you have cancer, this goes out to you. We hope that you make it through it. We hope that you destroy it and that your experience helps other people. Because I know that that's having a common, neither of us have had it. We both know people, but you know, it's not, it, it's just like anything else in life. It's not as real until it happens to you or somebody close to you. So it's, it's hard to, for somebody other than knowing that they're going through the same issue that several other people that you might know have gone through. Um, it's one of those things where you can't really say, oh, I know what you're going through. I'm sorry. I'm here for you. You're not, you're not really typically. You can't truly be empathetic for somebody until you actually go through it. Yourself. Yeah. But you can't, you, you, people, people want to say the thing. So actually this came up recently, uh, not cancer related. A friend of mine lost her baby. And she said, why do people always say like the stereotype? What would you say if somebody knew lost their baby? Not, not like a really close friend, but like, Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, the, the biggest thing was, um, God has a plan for you or. Oh, fuck no. Yeah. Um, it, when you say lost a baby, was she still pregnant or was it after the baby was born? She was pregnant. So lost the pregnancy. Okay. Lost. the. Okay. Yeah. I, I just needed the full concept. So it's, it's all part of the plan. It's this. Yeah, it's no, that, absolutely and... not. Absolutely not. And, I'm, I'm not down for that. So, and neither of us are religious. So the sympathy coming from that, like, doesn't weigh on us anyways. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, at what point are people going to recognize that that's not as good as it sounds? If your plan, if your plan for somebody that you supposedly love is to try and kill them, you probably don't love them. Probably not. I know that Christians and everybody else, you know, they want to believe this stuff and they because it's part of their culture, it's part of their religion, it's part of their education and everything like that. But to those that aren't, that's that's not what you think it sounds like. It's, right. not, it's not comforting at all. No. What what, what was uh, in the show yesterday? Same thing. Same kind of thing. The same faith. The, the LDS. The same faith that got you through this or whatever, or got the same faith that betrayed you is the faith that'll get you through it. Like, what right. the fuck does that mean? That's so backward. The same faith that put you in this position is the faith that's going to get you through the situation. Fuck you. That is so fucking backhanded and like, we're still here for you as long as you live. Right. The fuck? But we're also going to protect your abuser in this situation or... Yeah. Yeah. So we're going off on a little tangent here, but if, so I know that a lot of, I have a lot of friends that do either charitable work themselves or cancer research, cancer treatment, things of that nature. I have friends and I'm sure you do as well that. I have zero friends. You have friends. I have zero friends. You just have bad friends recently, but. I have zero friends. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. I'm not going to give details, but we have. The thing that we've been going through for about eight months now and haven't been public about it at all. A handful of people kind of knew or knew enough details that they could kind of piece it together. And this weekend, I reached out to about 67 people and was like, look, this is fucking embarrassing. I know this sounds dumb, but if you have any work, that my company can take on, or if you'd like to sponsor the podcast, because I don't want to, I don't want to take it. I don't want to make a fucking GoFundMe. We're too proud for that. Whether that's right or wrong, we're too proud for that. And people stepped up and she says that I don't have any friends, but people stepped up. And meanwhile, I haven't told anybody yeah. in my life period. And I, and the people that stepped up first were, my veteran friends, specifically people that I've served with. Now, I, I mean, I, I shouldn't say specifically, I should say that the ones that I served with, 
were the ones that came through the fastest. And that is amazing. Yeah. And not anything that I could... Like Jake, the money we talked about last episode. I haven't seen him since 2010. Wow. Yeah. I had Cooper in 2010. Yeah. That's when I say that, like, I have friends, I have friends. And I fully believe that I have friends. And this this reinforced that. And the one thing that I do want to say to Lori and anybody else going through something rough like that, you're also going to have your friends that do really want to support you, but they are not in a position to do so. And they're embarrassed. And that is one of the reasons why they might avoid you. Because they're embarrassed that they can't do something for you in that moment. They're not financially stable enough, their relationship or whatever, they're going through divorce. Like there's, there's so many reasons why in that specific situation, they couldn't step up to the plate. They couldn't pick you up or they couldn't donate money or they couldn't you know, visit you in the hospital. Like I give people the benefit until they do something specifically malicious towards me. And that's the one thing that I would say going into this, going into treatment and for anybody going through cancer. Obviously, I've never had cancer. Nona has never had cancer. But at a very, very basic level, the people that are trying to say, hey, good luck, I'm here for you, they probably do want to be. They wouldn't say it if they didn't. I mean, some people might be fucking malicious and or uh, egotistical and want to say I'm here for you when they aren't at all. But if you're that or, kind of... Or showboaty and like, look at what I brought you. Yeah. Just to check it off yeah. the box yeah. and make yeah. themselves feel better, but not actually to make you feel better. I brought you a bouquet of flowers right. in the hospital. Right. So you should... And let me post a picture on Facebook all yeah. about it, yeah. about how amazing I am yeah. and not how you are doing. Yeah. I, t I told you about this. I've donated to... Um, if anybody's familiar with NF1 or NF2, I've donated to, and he's not even in America and I've never even met this guy in person ever. I intentionally, if I donate to something like that, I don't, if, if there's an option to show it so that it shows up on their thermometer, like their goal is X amount. If there's an option for it to show up, but saying it's anonymous, I'm going anonymous. I still might want them to know that I contributed, like the, the recipient, but I don't want the public to know. I want them to know that it's me because I want them to know that even my online personality, like I'm still going to support you. His online personality is a troll, by the way. So just for those of you who don't know that. But there's, okay, there's two kinds of troll. There's the troll that is just always doing things to get under people's skin. And then there's me, which is doing things to stupid people to show them that they're dumb. Definitely think you're the first one. No, I'm you are always underneath people's skin, whether they are good or bad. Because I have too many dumb people in my life. Not you. I'm talking about online. Hello, I'm right here. Yeah. So, Nona has done some charitable work that people might not know about on this show. Uh it's about caring for kids. I think we talked about them once previously. One of our very early episodes that people probably didn't watch. Not that it had anything to do with that organization. They're a great organization. Originally out of Syracuse, New York. And one of the brothers, one of the founding brothers moved to North Carolina. And they have a, they're a state by state organization. So fundraising in New York doesn't apply to North Carolina. Fundraising in North Carolina doesn't apply to North Carolina, or New York. Um, but they're an organization that helps specifically families of children that have medical emergencies, cancer, something that they might not have insurance coverage for. They don't help people that have adequate coverage. Whether that's a problem for you is a different story, but it means that they can do more good for people that have nothing by being very selective of the people who they can try to help. They do everything. Um, what were, I was just watching, I think it was with you. Oh no, it was that movie, Ricky Stanicki, when he was explaining 
about the selective donation or contributions to it, it was all made up by the way if nobody's watched this it's just a comedy movie but um they were saying you know he's saying if there's oversight and this and that then you have to nickel and dime your own organization for all this oversight or on blind trust you can just give them all the money and say here you go this is what we got for you if they fuck it up then that's their problem you did your part it's on them to figure it out. So the organization was designed for families who are going to have to take off work yep. and help cover the mortgage, the power bill, et cetera, while they are having to leave their... Not, and not just that, like every, every bill that you might have, if you are spending your entire day, week, commuting, you know, a lot of People don't live close to the hospital their children, child might be admitted to. Um, there's only so much that like Fisher House and Ronald McDonald House and things like that can do or have capacity for. So they will pay for your car payment, your mortgage, your groceries, your utilities. You just have to apply. That doesn't mean that everyone gets accepted. We right. do want to be clear about that. We are not part of the organization. We have no say. We're just telling you about them and from our experience um i used to work for their marketing agency and i can tell you that these brothers genuinely good people yeah they all have other jobs and they all fund the organization out of pocket do it on their free time yeah. they these, th this is not a corporation or a uh, sorry a non-profit that feels like it's being run like a corporation yeah. like march of dime which which okay let's Jump into that real quick. That's also not a slide against as bigger organizations because there is a point at which you need to have people that are de in dedicated roles. Once you reach a certain scale, in order to continue to do the work that you're doing, you do have to pay people. You okay, I understand that, but taking you know a two million dollar salary just yeah. for being ahead, like what the fuck? Nobody needs a two million dollar salary just for being ahead. I mean. You're not going to get the best of the best if you're not going to pay them. So at this point, we're talking about a figurehead situation, kind of like the Queen right. of England. But, but, like, you're but people, just... but people will donate more because of that figurehead. In some, in, no, there are studies. People are donating because of the name, so they think March of Dimes. Would you like to round up your, you know, your seven dollar ninety seven cent? That's the scam, by the way. Don't do that. Yeah, donate on your own. Right. All but, you're doing is helping them with their corporate tax write-offs. Donate. If you see something on the on the little credit card machine at checkout, it's like, would you like to round up or add X amount or pay for the local food pantry? Just go to the food pantry and donate your time or give them money. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that. But I'm saying people are donating on the name of the organization, not the name of the person. I couldn't name who is running March of Dimes currently. Right. But they but they have. But I know they, they have that... figures in their marketing. So like The Rock, for example, if The Rock were to come out and endorse Better and Wiki, which he'll never do. Right. He will people, never do. He's going to attract more money to us than we could ever dream of. That is a little bit different because he is to, a celebrity. But they have to pay for that. And some, there's Paul, or there's uh, Rich Elon Musk. He's essentially a celebrity. And what organization is he tied to? I don't know. Well, I'm just, I'm Bill Gates, he's a celebrity. He's not in Microsoft anymore. Okay. I would not know his name or any of their names to be tied to. They have Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Right, right, right. And they work on like I, I'm talking West about Nile and Zika virus and, and third world countries. And there's like a whole yeah. conspiracy theory behind all of them. There's no, and... there's no conspiracy though. It's this is the same kind of stuff that I've said for years. They just have the money to do it. The only things that you should be investing in are gold and land. Period. Your laptop needs gold. Your phone needs gold. You want to wear gold? Do I? You need a. This is like my only jewelry. You need a. You need a plot of land to build your home on. The only things that anybody on Earth, that on Earth, I'm saying that specifically because I don't know what the fuck's going to happen on Mars and the Moon. The only thing on Earth. Not in my lifetime. The only thing on Earth that you should be investing in, gold and land. Everyone will always need gold. There's no technology without gold. 
There's no life without land. Everything else is, uh, I don't want to say spinoff, but it's, it's a component secondary to that. For your phone, obviously you need glass, you need copper, and you need everything else. But fundamentally, none of that works if you don't have gold. Okay. I'm not disagreeing with you. I don't know how we got up on that, but. A you thing. That was a you tangent. Yeah. So, yes, there there are studies. It's same with marketing. If you don't run ads, there's only so much that you can do organically. And I'm talking about nonprofits. I'm not just talking about businesses. There's only so much. You have one moment of virality, right? Say you do something crazy and the news picks it up and it becomes a big deal. It's going to be spun one way or the other. It could be positive. It could be negative. It doesn't matter. But either way, your organization is going to grow because of it, even if it's negative. But you need the consistency of ads. You need to keep your brand which is why nonprofits have to hire marketing companies, yes. which is not something they obviously want to do right. because they don't want to give the money that should go to right. needy families, right. but they need to also grow their nonprofit. But to, yeah, so to do the most good for the most people, you have to invest back into your organization. People hate that. People absolutely despise it. They want to see dollar for dollar Dollar goes in, dollar goes out to the cause. It's very, very, very difficult to do that unless you yourself are footing the bill. Would you like to talk about Wounded Warrior Project? So I don't know how they're, who they are, or what they're doing right now, but like they have corporate sponsors and stuff like that. And it's also, once you get that big, it's also a political game. Hey, we'll donate to you, but we want our guy on the board. So my parents got their first inquiry from Wounded Warrior Project about four to five months ago. And my mother contacted How? me. How? So I'm guessing once you hit a certain age, an AARP just sells say. your information to multiple nonprofits. I got an AARP thing about 10 years ago. They were asking me if I was getting ready to retire. Yeah, they, I don't know how they fucked that up, but still living in Indiana, I got the same. It was like, Andrew, it looks like you're getting ready to retire. You should retire from the military. No, at... I was already, I was in, I was getting ready to graduate from college at that point already. That's funny. Yeah. So, anyways, my mom reached out to me and was like, Did Andrew put us on a oh, no, absolutely. list? And I was like, Andrew, what are you talking about? She was like, Doesn't he work for them? It's like, no, he doesn't work for them. So the so she's blended together all military nonprofits into one, which, I mean, I guess I could see from an outsider how that's possible the, to do. The other thing that people need to understand, because, I mean, we run a nonprofit. The other thing that people need to understand about nonprofits is, especially if you're just starting, you... You need to go out of your way to experience every failure possible because if you shoot your shot, if right now, and I know that the board. I would love to see you shoot your shot. The board is doing it. Like I, yeah, I do some of it as well. I put stuff together for them, make sure the budget. I, I am so much of the behind the scenes guy and I tell them, I, I have explicitly said this in board meetings. I don't care what you guys do right now. We are so small. Nobody knows who we are. Go find out what works. Because right now, if you and I were in a meeting with somebody, say we represent some organization, we're in a meeting with somebody and somebody sits down with us. My interpretation of this person, your interpretation of this person will be two things. You replace us entirely. Those two people's interpretation of this is going to be completely different. But if you can get feedback from all of them, you can tailor and cater whatever your pitch is going to be for each specific meeting. You can't have a static pitch. You can't have a static approach. You have to have a different approach for every meeting that you go into. And the only way that you're going to figure that out is if you actually go into them and plan to fail. If you walk out with a check in hand, awesome. But if you don't, especially if you have no experience and you don't, but you are willing to ask for feedback, hey, you gave me this meeting. 
you said no. Why? Can you give me a punch list of things that I need to improve? Can you tell me one through five? What are the top five things that if I would have said it differently, had a different document, had different statistics, like what do I need to come back into this meeting next year and win you over? If you're unwilling to do that, you're just never going to grow. I'm learning a lot right now. That's why do you think I take and go into so many meetings and stuff all the time? Like I'm, I'm always trying to learn. Not only, not only is what works today not going to work tomorrow, the landscape of the, like what's uh, moral, what's ethical, that changes over time as well. Everything is always changing. If you're stuck in your ways, you're going to be left. The only, there are very, very few exceptions to this. Apple gets away with murder because they're too big to fail, not because they're willing to change. Boeing, literally, doors flying off their plane, people at risk of dying. They're not going to go anywhere. If you and I started a plane company right now and that happened to our plane, we'd be in jail right now. We'd be in prison. Boeing is too big to fail. In order to get there, you have to know the right people. But in order to know the right people, you either have to have money or you need to be willing to cater to each pitch. You have to walk in. You have to be Ricky Stanicki. Be yourself. Pitch it your way. Tweak it slightly for the audience. Obviously, if you walk into, I don't know, a feminist group and you're just anti-feminist the entire time, they're not even going to listen to you. It's going to be like the, the guy in Ricky Stanicki that was air dicking. Did you fall asleep for that? No, I was definitely awake. Oh. You were the one who was falling asleep. Yeah. Air dicking. Yeah. Meanwhile, I've been living my life in fear and just simply not taking meetings because I'm too fearful to fail. Yep. Got to turn around. Got to go in there willing to fail. You got to go in knowing you're going to fail. Because if you know you're going to fail, don't. I've lucked into so much shit and you're like, oh, your life. Oh, no, I, it's because I walked into a meeting and was like, I'm not going to get this. And they're like, okay, we want to hire you. And then years later, they are the ones referring me to major universities. And that is amazing. Yeah. So, and it's not, it's not a short game. It's a long game for sure. The perfectionist in me just simply cannot fail. Yeah. And so I avoid yeah. the situation entirely. But I do want to, I do want to say there are some times when you do need a starting point that is very structured and rigid. Like when I'm building a website for somebody, I'm not doing half it. That is a fundamental point. Okay. Maybe your content's not good. Maybe your images aren't that great. Maybe you don't want to pay for photography, video, stuff like that. And you provide your own thing. Okay. I'll do my best to doctor it up a little bit for you. I'll do my best to make it okay. But foundationally, you need to have the functionality before the demand is there. If you had the functionality before the demand is there, you're not missing anything. You're not missing out. Sure, the landscape is going to change. Features are going to change. Somebody's going to ask for something down the line. There might be somebody that asks us, hey, do you guys have, um, I think, a social media platform that we don't, Rumble, I think is one, or Truth. What is Rumble? I don't, I don't remember. There's Truth. Truth Social, which is Trump's what is platform. That? What? Yeah. They're all basically Twitter. I've never heard of these so until that, right now. The the creator of Twitter created a new Twitter. It's not called Twitter because it's still owned by X. It's still Twitter and X are still copyrighted, whatever. But that's and that's what Facebook is trying to do with threads. Okay. Threads is Twitter knockoff. And they want to create what's called a federation. They want everything to be everywhere. So they want you to be able to log into your preferred app. Let's say your preferred app is Instagram. My preferred app is Twitter. What you post on Instagram, I should see on Twitter. 
I should be able to engage with your Instagram content from Twitter. Okay. That's, that's the direction that we're going with all this. The difference between the app that you're using at that point is who makes the ad revenue. So Reddit has, Reddit has been this way all along. Reddit has always been a federated platform. Anybody could build an app in, in some ways you like the, all the social media aggregation tools that you've seen me use over the years. That's kind the, but that's for marketing. Like that's not for consumption. That's for publishing. They want to create the all in one platform. And then the app that you use is the app that receives the ad revenue. Think about it. Actually think about it in terms of TV and cable providers. Everybody has ABC, everybody has Disney, but who you pay YouTube, Comcast, Spectrum, whatever is who makes the ad revenue. That's what they want to do with social media. Sounds like what's his face from the office who made yeah, that. Well, yes. Yeah. It's, that's exactly what it is. It's going to post on X, Y, and Z, call your phone, yep. blah, blah, blah. Yep. But that all of this is to say that you, you, okay, you should scrutinize every nonprofit. You should scrutinize ours. You should scrutinize all of them. You should know the breakdown of where every dollar is going to. There are platforms and services that watchdogs, whatever you want to call them, that, you know, give reporting and grades and scores, whatever you want to call it, um, like GuideStar. And there's one that starts with an end it's escaping me right now. Where they can rate the nonprofit, essentially? It's not just a rating. It's a transparency thing. You have to provide so much documentation. How much money did you take in? How much money did you pay out? Who's on your board? What are their demographics? Who else do they work for? Do they have a conflict of interest? So, like I said in a previous episode, Veteran Wiki achieved bronze, or, uh, silver our first year. And that's because we hadn't been able to yeah. file taxes So you can yet. be you can be no rating, which... I won't even say his name because I don't want them to search him. The real estate agent mm. is such a fraud. He had no rating. For a bronze rating, all you have to do is provide your information, your tax ID. Considering he was on, what, Good Morning America? Yeah. Yeah. With no rating? Yeah. Which For years. Lasting. Years. Years. Uh, has he done it now? No. Oh. Years. Even though you called him out on it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we got silver the first month we existed because I provided everything. We have transparency documentation on the website, on the wiki. It tells you everything about us. It tells you our bank accounts. It tells you our... So is your implication that it's going into his personal bank yeah. account? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to follow here. Yeah. He... Nobody's... Nobody... Nobody has questioned him. Nobody's actually looked into it. But every nonprofit is listed, whether you want to be on there or not. It's like the Better Business Bureau, but mm -hmm. not malicious. The Better Business Bureau is fucking bullshit. They're they're nothing. They're a nothing organization. Don't trust them. I agree. And don't you have to pay? Yeah. If yeah. you want to update your profile yeah, and I thought, you have to be pay. accredited. Right, and, right, yeah, right, no, right. fuck them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's features on GuideStar that you can pay for, but that's more like, hey, we can help you with some of these other things if you don't have somebody specifically on your board. So if you don't want to pay for, and it, it's just like any other nonprofit discount, all they do is they take all of these, the, they take their aggregate buying power and they say, hey, we have tens of thousands of organizations. What kind of discount can we provide if we're paying you directly? We'll, we'll be your middleman. We'll market your product, TechSoup, Percent, these are all those kind of, of organizations. They're also nonprofits, but their job is to connect nonprofits with tools for nonprofits at a discounted rate. Their entire existence is predicated around helping other nonprofits. Isn't that kind of what Veteran Wiki is hoping to do? I mean, we want to help nonprofits, for profits, individuals. The information can be used by anybody. It's just like Wikipedia. Yeah. So that's to say that. There are so many levels and so many nuances to all of this to simply say that Wounded Warrior Project is bad 
is wrong. They might not do as much good as somebody wants them to do. They might not approve certain people for certain things because they don't meet a certain threshold. Everybody wants to tell a good story. Everybody wants their marketing content. Everyone wants to spin something. The problem with that, though, is not the organization. It's our culture. Our culture wants to see that. So the nonprofit has to provide that. That's why... More gory of the story. Yeah. The ASPCA. Mm, and Yes. Yeah. If they can show the most... Abused animal. Bloody dog with this whole terrible... It's funny that you say that because somebody brought it up on Nextdoor of all apps a couple of weeks ago and said... Why do they show the most abused animals? Why don't they show the animals after they've gone to a new home? And if you rescue this animal, you could show them a new life. But you never see the after. You only see the before and the most gory of situations, the puppy mills, the whatever. Because happiness doesn't sell. Making an emotional ask of people and also showing perpetually that there's a need for you. If, if there's an end. And I cried at every single commercial when I was pregnant for ASPCA. If it bawled my eyes out. If, if there's an end, people are no longer going to donate to you and support you. If, if you can show I have this goal or this mission and oh, okay. Mission's complete. Nobody's going to give you another dollar. You've finished. You're done. There has to always be a need, which, whether it's manufacturer or not, is not this conversation because I'm sure that exists. But, but there are always dogs that need help. There are always people that need help. So they know that they are always going to be needed or wanted or have a mission. There's, they can't ever tell you at least in the ads. In the ads, they're always, there's always going to be an ask. There's always a need. There's always an ask. In their organic content, they might tell the feel-good stories because now they've already captured you. It makes sense. Yeah. Hey, here's our here's the journey of mm -hmm. this person. You've donated to this puppy litter, so we want to give you an update. They've been adopted out to X yeah. amount of families, and we only have two left please yeah. pass it on and how many how many people do you think go out of their way to look up that child or that dog that they donated to they don't they they want to blindly feel good or have a tax write-off or both and that's the audience that you have to target for the most part that's why these organizations lean on the story that's why they lean on the person. That's why they want to interview the parents or the child if they're old enough or whatever. They want to know everything that you went through. They want you to tell your story from your perspective because it's more emotional. It's more relatable. It's not a talking head going up there and saying, we can do this, but we need your help. When, For only a dollar a day. Yeah. When they can say... We've got this person or this animal or this cause that we're trying to help. Here's how you can help. They don't even say, or I should say, they don't always say, here's what we're doing. They say, here's how you. Mm -hmm. put, it, put it on yeah. the viewer. Yeah. Here's how you can help right now. The burden is on your shoulders. Yep. Let's just never like trend because I'm outing how the marketing works. No, I will. I'll make it. I'll we're put ad dollars behind it. We're never going <laughs> to trend, period. No, we have. Yeah. Oh, because we're boring. That's why. Yeah, now we're actually indexing in search. Because we're boring. Yeah. Boring. Hashtag boring. Hashtag boring. Actually, hashtag uh, he's wrong, she's right, or hashtag HSWR on Facebook and Instagram will get you an automatic message from us. And then. And then. A hundred followers did we did we plug anything this episode or did we just talk about nonprofits and how we fucking hate cancer but a hundred followers 
we'll get an Amazon gift card. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Why don't we do at 100 followers? We'll give somebody an Amazon gift card and we'll donate $100 to Lori's charity of choosing. We don't have a lot of money, so $100 is kind of a lot for us right now. Yeah, that's a lot of doll hairs. We have a lot of bills. We're trying to fix that problem. We're trying to sell my other house. Once my other house sells... We still won't be rich. We won't be rich, but we'll be less stressed. That's a big deal. That eliminates uh, $1,500 a month off our plate between mortgage and utilities. They don't think that's a lot because they're like, oh, $1,500 was that one bedroom? No, I just have a good rate and I... Low principal because I bought it six years ago and I have a 2.5% rate. Either way, you give me gray hairs. You don't see mine. I have the most gray hairs. I dye mine and pluck them. I wouldn't even cut my hair if you didn't let me or didn't make me. What the fuck? Um, if you guys, if you guys genuinely know, and yeah, this is obviously asking for engagement. If you guys genuinely know organizations that are doing good or organizations that we can tell friends and family members to look into if they have some sort of cancer, tumor, medical condition that isn't generally covered or isn't covered that well, um, let us know. We will aggregate this information and eventually it'll make it somewhere we might have a I will have to do my own due diligence. I'm not just going to take you blindly on this shit because I'm not going to put my name behind it. My name might not be big, but I'm not going to let this pop up in two, five years, whatever. And people are like, oh, he endorsed this organization the whole time they were behind child trafficking. No, fuck you. IACKids.org. You can donate to them if you want to help children. We will have a pinned comment after Lori sees this. So it might be a little while. If there's no pin comment when you watch this, it's because she hasn't seen it either or listened to it. I don't know how she's going to consume it. But there will be a pin comment with the organization of her choice. We'll be on there. We will also post our receipts. I'm all about that. We're not just going to donate and tell you we donated. We'll donate and post it so you can see that we actually did it. That's one of the very few times where I will publicly Put my name behind something because I know somebody's going to be like, well, did they actually do it or did they just pocket the money? No, I'm going to fucking show you. So, do you have any closing remarks? Fuck cancer. And if you have cancer, it's hard to come up with words to tell you that somebody else hasn't already told you before. Message us. I'll try and send some humor your way. That's about the, realistically, that's about the best that I can provide right now. Maybe one day we'll be able to provide better. By humor, he means... Boob humor. Boob humor? Mm-hmm. What if the women want penis humor? Small PB Andrew. There you go. Coming to the rescue. Yep. Oh, actually, I do want to make one note. I want to shout out Lance on this. You remember those, um, like God. the Roman era statues where like it was prestigious to have like the smallest. You're shouting out Lance who has the nut huggers and like suffocates your tiny little penis. Yeah. Makes it look even smaller. Yeah. Okay. Thigh huggers definitely make your penis look smaller. Maybe for my body type, but some other body types it might not. Who knows? Um, you remember, you know, those like Roman era statues where they literally portrayed themselves with the smallest dick possible because that was what made you look rich and prestigious. Whether or not they actually had tiny dicks like that or not, that's a different story. But do you know what I'm talking about? He made shorts. They have that printed on them. So if you want to walk around with, with a your, tiny penis, with your little Roman statue pee pee, and your thigh huggers that make your penis look even smaller. Yep. So it's small penis on tiny pee pee. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. You could be a Ken doll and nobody So I'm it. guessing that he <laughs> has a tiny little penis and he just wants everybody else to have a tiny little penis. I'm sorry. Are you dying? It, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm sure Lance's girlfriend. Devin will appreciate this as well. Well, she oh, probably nice. has to use something to compensate for his tiny little penis, but oh, it's okay. I'm going to send him a clip. So, fuck cancer. And 
fuck your liners on your thigh huggers that suffocates your client's dicks. There you go. Big, uh, no, small words from Size Queen. Whatever. Whatever. All right, Nora, do you have anything else you want to say now that I already fucked up this intro or outro? No, my outro was only supposed to be fuck cancer. It wasn't supposed to be anything else. Fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. Thank you.